Hey everyone, I'm Armor Gaming. Welcome back to my channel and welcome to Monster Legends. Are you ready for a rank 5 level 130 showcase of Hal Gooden, who also has these really powerful diamond relics, Nishin Sword and Solaris' Sword? So, Nishin Sword, we're all familiar with this. After hitting the target has nightmares, this will deal at the current level 9,640 points of dark damage to the damaged enemy and it also removes 143 points of stamina and it has two uses. And how good in herself, it can actually apply nightmares to all of the enemy monsters. So it's an automatic activation. But just as how we have this dark sword, we also have a light sword, Solaris' sword. After hitting of target's life is above 50%, this will deal 5,050 points of light damage to the target enemies. And so if the enemies I'm facing are dark based, that's going to be 50% stronger. And so here we have this great monster with some really powerful relics. And really quickly, let's just go over Helgudin and what makes her so vicious. So the trait, she has hardened, all status effects have a 20% less accuracy against it. This is like typical on just about every monster nowadays. But what makes Helgudin extremely special is this trait right here, the dodge area trait. Will evade all area skills. And this isn't like evasion that can be removed by a skill that removes positive effects. This is a permanent trait, which, which means the only way to actually get rid of it is by using like Angenica who can do trait disable or any of the monster that has a trait disable skill. So it's not very easy to get rid of this. And what makes it even more devastating, more difficult to actually get rid of is that if the skill the enemy is using is an AOE like trait disable, that won't work because this monster is protected against all area skills. So it's really only single trait disable. And yeah, it's, it's really cool. You don't take any damage from AoEs. You don't take any, no DLTs can land, no effects can land. You are 100% completely protected from AoEs. So even if the enemy monster is super fast and they go first and they do AoE this, AoE, let's take Ruby for example, Ruby Explosion, Lane Odds, the attacker does an AoE 50 damage based AoE. It doesn't matter. You'll take no damage. You're completely fine. And then you're free to attack. And then we can talk about the skills. This monster is... It's a great, great monster, great skill set. Loki's Touch, this is skills group 1. It applies Dark Wings to one enemy, and you give yourself an immediate extra turn. That It's so simple, but it's so straightforward, but just the fact that it, it applies Dark Weakness, and hey, I'm going to get an extra turn, and now I'm stronger against you. And what's really, what's really awesome about it is the fact that even if you're facing a Dark Monster, well, it doesn't matter that you have Dark Based Attacks, because you already have the Dark Weakness applied. Visions of the Dam deals heavy dark damage to an enemy and applies nightmares, which will activate your sword. Also, take a look at the cooldown and the stamina cost 10 and 1. That is insane. Blades of Nightmares is an AoE that deals moderate dark damage to enemies and applies nightmares. Once again, this will have your sword activating and it only costs 27 stamina with one turn cooldown. And then we have Dark Submission, which deals heavy dark damage to enemies and applies dark weakness to all enemies. So, this skill can set up for Blades of Nightmares in the proper situation. If we take a look at some other skills, there's more you can choose from. For example, we have this skill right here, which deals massive special damage. Massive special damage on a monster this strong, that might be worth considering. We can also do immunity to control, which I don't think you necessarily really need. Um, there will be blood, moderate special damage applies bleeding. No, the nightmares is way more powerful. Even the dark weakness can be perceived as more powerful if you have the right monster. So really the only skill I would consider using from time to time is your special base damage skill all right but with that being said let's take on this monster into pvp and see what exactly we can do considering we are in a pretty high competitive league let's see if we can somehow emerge victorious and beat some of these bases so i gotta be smart about it right i gotta be really really smart about it let's refresh actually i should have probably taken on the middle base to see how i could have done but that's fine we'll refresh one more time and let's see who my opponents are we have Neobuki and a Kane. I think they have a lot of single. We have Baratgor, he has single. The middle base, I don't know what they have to offer, to be honest. Sela, I think, has a possession skill. You know what? We're going to replace this monster with a raw. We will use Dun Raw. No, but you know what? Here's the thing. I kind of want to showcase the fact that AoEs don't affect me. So we're going to try this team out. I don't really know what they can do, but we're going to... We're gonna, I guess we'll find out, right? I'm not expecting to win every battle, but I do want to just showcase her and her potential. So let's click fight and oh I do actually go first and oh look there is a dodge area right here so I can't use any AoEs but let's see I can do Sama Warrior awesome I get an immediate extra churn and then let's see what my skills can actually do Vision of the Damned deals 55k Blades of Nightmares deals 
Um, 44,000. And then Dark Submission, 49,000. Keep in mind, though, I can do Loki's Touch. So who do I perceive to be the main threat? Well, let's see. This monster will evade all area skills. Well, that's unfortunate. So I'm, I'm facing two monsters that essentially do what I do. So that single target attack would have really come in handy right now. Um, I guess what I can do is just do... Applies Nightmares to one enemy, deals heavy damage. Well, let's do Loki Touch on Cell Lot. And then we'll do Visions of the Damned. Because that is my strongest, right? Yep, Visions of the Damned. And check it out. Oh, no, you have the Abomination, so I can't apply Nightmares. Well, that was unfortunate for me. Darn. Alright, so see, that was the first AoE, and see how it missed on my monster. So the great thing about using Natalus and any monster that has dodge area is that all single attacks... So I always say Natalus. The thing about using Brutalis... The thing about using Brutalis with a monster that would dodge area is that all single target attacks will always be directed towards Brutalis. Meanwhile, the AoEs... Even though you attack the whole team, I get to evade them, so I don't take any damage whatsoever. Come on, area. Mega... Nope. Alright, that's fine. Alright, going over to me, what can I do? Pain to get rid of negative effects. I do have Infliction Days and Quicksand. Or I can do Death Moratorium for some powerful healing. Um, let's do Pain. And look. Alright, I wanted to showcase that. Remember what I was saying about Dodge Area? We'll evade all area attacks. I just did Pain, which is supposed to remove positive effects. But because pain is an area, it evades it. So it's a similar logic with my trait. If the enemy does an AoE trait disable, that actually won't work because my dodge area prevents me from getting hit from any AoEs. So that's a pretty cool thing. Um, let's see what I can do now. Dark submission applies dark weakness to all enemies. Applies nightmares. Well, let's just do the dark weakness on Salah, I guess. And my Solaris sword kicked in. I forgot I had that relic. Cool. Immunity to control. Open wound, dodge area, bam, missed again. Sorry, Salah, you're not going to hit me. We can do Death Moratorium now to protect my Natalus. <laughs> my Brutalis, sorry. Dodge area, once again, has protected me. If we look at my HP, I have not been touched. The, this whole entire duration, I have not been touched. My Natalus has taken a lot of damage, but my Sammy is keeping him alive. I can even do Megaton if I want to. But let's do some Quicksand and Daze. Awesome. And then going back to Sammy, I think I just have to recharge, right? I can't do anything. Yep. Recharge. All right, let's see what happens. Oh, there's that. There's a dodge area working for me again. Awesome, awesome. Not out staff. Okay, finally, I get a turn in. And by now, your dodge area has disappeared. So I can finally hurt you. And hurt you hard, I will. We're going to hit you with the Loki's Touch first. And then we can do Blades of Nightmare. Or we can do Vision of the Damned. I'm going to save my single target attack for Frostilka over there. So I'll do Blades of Nightmares, and Nightmares landed, which means Nishin Swords also land, which means I drain enemy stamina, I deal some extra damage, the lower sword also kicked in. Wow, what a powerful monster. Did so much in just a short amount of time. Let's do Pain to get rid of my negative effects. It feels so good to be able to hit him again. Alright, Brutalis Barrier. Um, I don't really need to use it, so I'm just going to recharge. Purifying Gaze, recharge, and... It's a good thing I have such low stamina costing skills. Uh, let's see, what am I going to do? I'm going to do Dark Submission. So bye-bye. And I still have my single target attack reserved for Frost Silica over there. So let's do Loki's Touch. So now Dark Weakness and Visions of the Damned. And my sword will kick in thanks to the Nightmares. Drain your stamina, deal some extra damage. And thanks to the Dark Weakness, the Nightmares actually deal some extra... The, the Nishin Sword actually deals some extra, extra damage. And let's finish you off. Boom. And we'll do Death Moratorium to get my monsters at full HP. And let's see, I'm going to have to wait one extra turn before I can beat you. So we essentially have the same trait. Oh, looks like the DOTs did it. So this was a great, great, great battle. And one that I wasn't necessarily sure I could win, but I emerged victorious. Let's do a couple more so we can showcase how good in ranked up and just how powerful she truly is. We will refresh, and let's see if I can find another Charmless base or something. Ooh, there is a Shade Moon, a Gakora, and a Na and a Brutalis. You know what? That could be fun, but Shade Moon might kill my Sammy, and I need Sammy for revival purposes. Although that could have been fun. Do I want to get hit with cooldowns activated? I don't think so. So I guess we need to take on the Sammy base. The Sammy, the Elvira, and the... Oh my gosh. Three level 10 runes, and then three level 10 team. Oh, wow. All right, let's see what happens. 
we are going to do um, pain probably to start off. Yeah, we'll do pain. And then semi might turn transfer. Yep. And then he'll do his AoE skill. Bam. I wanted that to happen. So look how that it missed. That AoE skill is powerful. Look how much damage it dealt on my Brutalis. But it completely missed me. And guess what? You're earth based. I'm dark. Dark submission. Whoa. Well, I'm going to obliterate Elvira. And I deal a lot of damage against the enemy. Um, the enemy Warthog over here. Unfortunately, Sammy is dark, so I don't deal that much damage. Oh wait, that's not a problem. I can do Loki's Touch. And unfortunately, it missed, but that wouldn't have been a problem. I can, however, do Nightmares, so I'm worried about them getting a turn in and using some stamina. Nope. Visions of the Damned. Not Visions of the Damned, Blades of Nightmares. So, let me hit you with a Nightmare. Let me hit you with my Nishin Sword. Bye-bye, Alvira. Bye-bye, all stamina. And look, Solar Sword activates too. And both of my swords activated. They have no stamina. So this monster also serves as a denial because I removed their stamina so they couldn't do anything to me. It's great. It is great. I'm going to turn transfer back to me and look, I get to attack again. This time with Dark Submission and there we go. Took them both on. The base looks scary to begin with, but when you have a powerful monster like Halgudin, like no base is truly that scary. Alright, I think I have two more attacks in so let's try to get those done. And yeah, let me try to find a Charmless Revolting base that I perceive... As pretty beatable, pretty beatable. Ooh, double semi rag. Um, ooh, the base in the middle. I'm surprised they have that many trophies with that team. I'm telling you, these new generation of monsters, they are something else. They are truly, truly something else. Let's try taking on Azul. All right, we will click fight. And that monster over there, O'Reilly, essentially same thing, dodge area. So see, my monsters got hit with cooldowns activated, but not Halgudin. Halgudin was not even touched. So I'll have to recharge with Sammy. Megaton got activated. That's fine with me. A, that is another AoE stun. Look at that. Halgudin not even touched. Halgudin has not gone. And I've survived four attacks without getting touched. That is what makes this monster so powerful. And what I love about monsters that do the Megatons is that they are just asking for a beating, especially with Loki's touch. So Loki's touch first. So now weak to dark attacks, right? And now Blades of Nightmares or Dark Submission... All the damage, that 59 damage is going to be multiplied by 3 because this monster was dumb enough to... <laughs> this monster was dumb enough to activate Megatons. So check this out. I'll do times 1 speed. Vi uh, Dark Submission, because I don't want to activate my Nishin Sword and my Solaris Sword. But Dark Submission, 59,000. Miss, miss. And f Oh, wow. That was weird. Why did it miss so much? I was expecting... I wasn't expecting all those misses. Alright, but wait, only one miss or did two miss? Anyhow, dodge area again. Dodge area again. How is it possible? I remember when I made a video, I remember reading a comment saying like that I was overhyping these monsters in the dodge area. No, believe me. Uh, there we go. Sammy's actually hit. I am not overhyping how powerful dodge area is. There it is. What are we like on turn six and I haven't been touched? Dodge area. How many times do you see the dodge area icon pop up and then... Again, partnering up with Na with Brutalis, they can't touch me. They can't do anything to me. Um, let's do Blades of Nightmares. And this is where my sword kicks in. Nishin Sword and even Solaris Sword. And that takes care of two monsters. And the cool thing is I have a single target attack to take on O'Reilly. So it's not like I'm completely helpless. Oh, no, 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 no. I can still take on O'Reilly easily. So we will do Death Moratorium. Oh, let me be careful. Reverse Healing. Ooh, that's not good. Guard down, sunburn, bleeding, poison. Well, you need the you need the death moratorium. If Sammy dies, that's fine. Yep, <laughs> that was bound to happen. Like I can do Loki's touch, and then I can do visions of the damned, and just like that, O'Reilly is dead. Another great successful battle. What I do want to see is how powerful that other single target attack is. The special base one, so I might swap it out just for the purpose of my last attack. So let me swap that out real quick. And like I don't I thought I had two level 10 runes. I actually have a level 10 and level 8. So now I think we'll swap out Dark Submission. Because I just want to see how powerful it is. Alright, and we will. I think we can refresh. And I think we can. Ooh. Ruby. Emerald, actually. Emerald, Ragnarok, and Solaris. We'll refresh again. And let's see if I can find a good base. Um, um let's just do the middle base again. So basically the same team that I already fought. I know I could beat them easily. This time they have a different rune setup, but that's completely fine. I think it's going to be the same thing. Churn transfer. 
Yep, and then AoE skill. Oh no, single target. Wow, OTK'd actually. We'll do a Holy Resurrect. Bring him back from the dead, and let's see what happens. Um, oh, it's actually my turn. So this skill actually deals 57,000 damage. Quite powerful indeed. Um, let's see, has everyone gone? Nope, used to have evasion. So let's try to do what I tried to do last time that didn't work. Loki's touch. All right, dark weakness. So Sammy, doesn't matter. Visions of the Damned. Um, Blades of Nightmares. I'm going to do Visions of the Damned just to kill this powerful monster that has double damage. So Nishin Sword kicks in. 14,000. See, it deals for it dealt 14,000. If I click on my monster, watch. If I click on my monster, it says Nishin Sword deals 9,640 points of damage, of dark damage. The reason it actually deals 14,000 is thanks to the dark weakness. So that's just an extra little advantage of having the dark weakness. The Nishin Sword deals more damage. Um, let's do 50% more damage in particular. Let's do the quicksand and daze. Oh, wait, that's a single. I should have done the AoE. Um, let's do some uh, warrior. Ooh, so if I had my other skill, I could set up dark weakness to both of them and then do my skill, but no need. Um, gosh, this is so powerful. 70, wait. 71,000. Oh, because you are different levels. 120 and you are 130. So let's do... Well, let's do this. Let's do... Let's do Blades of Nightmares. So Nightmares landed, Nishin Sword, Solaris Sword. Drained all their stamina, essentially. Um, Visions of the Damned. And I guess we'll just kill Sammy. Bam, 71k. Beautiful skill. So again, you can utilize it if you ever need to. That's the beauty of it. And I don't even know the cooldown is. Was it one churn? Was it two churn? Let's find out right now. Loki's Touch. Make him weak to dark attacks. And also one churn cooldown. It's a powerful, massive damage attack on a one churn cooldown. And so there you have Hal Gooden in all of her glory with a really great team combination. Partnered up with Brutalis, single attacks, single attacks can't be directed towards your Hal Gooden. The dodge area, as you saw, such a powerful, powerful trait. Sammy for reviving, Sammy for healing. This is a powerful team combination, but this alone is just one mighty, mighty powerful monster. So once again, I want to give a huge thanks to my pal Victor for letting me use your account to make this video. I had a blast using Hell Gooden, fully ranked up at rank 5, level 130, with these good runes, with these good relics. Thank you very much, Victor. And with that being said, make sure to check the description below if you want to join my Discord, if you want to check out my merch, and if you want to become a patron. And also, I want to hear your guys' thoughts in the comments below about this monster. Let me know everything you think about how good and how good do you think she is, how does she compare to other dark monsters, to dark attackers, to attackers in general. Whatever thoughts you have, may, whatever thoughts you may have floating around in your head, please let me know in the comments below. Thank you very much, and I will see you all next time.